Hi everyone. We are talking about a problem from Code Forces round 560. The problem is E. So it's a difficult problem. And what we have is a 2D matrix given to us. So from 0, 0 to m minus 1, n minus 1 is this 2D matrix. So in this 2D matrix, there'll be lots of cells, each of them in the position, let's say m of i j is going to tell you something. M of ij is either black or white. That's what this matrix is special about. Uh, there's just two possible colors you can have here. And the number of black cells, this is either white or black. And the number of black cells is given by a number k, which is less than or equal to 1000. So k is less than or equal to 1000. The length of the matrix m is less than 10 raised to power 5 and so is n. So the total number of cells in the matrix will at most be 10 raised to power 10, which is 10 billion, which is a lot. So the standard approach of just evaluating the entire matrix is not going to work here. But what are we trying to do? You have from the starting position 0, 0, a player who can move only to the right or down at any given position. Okay, so once you're moving down, you can, you can do that, but you cannot take a left or you cannot go upwards. So it's constrained by moving down or moving to the right. You need to find the total number of ways you can get from 0, 0 to m minus 1, comma n minus 1. But what's the significance of this white or black cell? Well, the black cells are like barricades. You cannot touch them. When you're going down or to the right, if you're going to hit a black cell, that's going to be an illegal move. And therefore, you have to avoid that. And you have to head in the other direction. If both of them are blocking your way, then of course, there is no legal move possible here. And this path is going to fail. So maybe from here, you could have gone this way. And so on and so forth up to the last point. So what you need to do is you need to find the total number of ways in which you can get from 0, 0 to m minus 1, n minus 1, such that you're not going to hit any of these barricades and you're only going down or to the right. So the first thing to notice is that the standard approach for these kind of problems, which is a dynamic programming approach, is finding the number of ways. Let's say I have a function which is giving me the number of ways to get to ij from 0, 0. So this is a recursive function. Uh, I can use i minus 1 j, the answer here, plus i j minus 1. Yeah, this is a very well-known approach where you just take the previous rows, same column, which is this thing, which is this thing rather, uh, and the previous columns, same row. So that is this thing. So this will give you the solution, but the problem is i and j i is going from 0 to m minus 1 and j is going from 0 to n minus 1. We know that these constraints are really big. So the complexity of this is going to be order m cross n. And that's going to fail the test cases. It's going to time out. So take your time to understand, uh, to try this solution actually. It's a difficult problem. It's an E problem. But once you try, you will be able to see the elements of the solution probably come up. Let's first simplify the problem. I'm going to say that there are no black cells in this matrix, none. But that's impossible to say. So what I'm going to do is the next best thing. I'm going to go to the very first black cell, a black cell which has not been blocked by any other black cell. So that is ij, this point, and pq, this point. These two, by the time you touch them, you could not have possibly touched any other black cell. Right? And similarly, this one. So the formula for this, finding out the number of paths from origin to a given point ij is given by c of i plus j. And over here, I'll have i, which is equivalent to saying i plus j c j. Because these two 
elements are the same. It's symmetric, so it makes sense that it will be this way. Okay, so just to uh, tell you what C is, C is nothing but I plus J factorial upon I factorial into J factorial. Okay, combinations that you're getting from 0, 0 to 1, uh, this path. Similarly, for PQ, I'll have P plus Q C P. And for X, Y, I need to take these two blocks into consideration because I cannot skip any of these blocks when considering the total number of paths from 0, 0 to X, Y. So for now, let me calculate all possible paths from 0, 0 to X, Y, and then I'll subtract the extra paths. So from 0, 0 to X, Y, I have, again, the simple formula X plus Y C X. But I need to remove those paths which came from here, I, J. So those paths need to be removed. That is minus from this point to this point. That is given by X plus Y minus I minus J. So this is, in fact, you can put it in brackets and just do an addition. C of X minus I. Okay. This is the total number of paths from this point to this point. And so on. I mean, basically total number of paths from here to here. But that's not enough. What you need to take into consideration is the total number of paths to get to this point. So the only way that you can uh, overcount is that calculate the number of paths from this point to this point and find the number of ways that you could have actually gotten to this point. So multiplying these two quantities, you will be able to remove all the extra paths you had from 0, 0 to x, y, in which i, j is involved. All right. Total number of ways to get to ij, from there total number of ways to get to xy, subtract it. So this quantity has to be multiplied by c of i below and i plus j over here. Similarly, for pq, we need to subtract that quantity x plus y minus p plus q c x minus p into P plus Q, P, C, P. This thing is one quantity. This thing is the second quantity. And this is the original quantity. This is without having any black paths. This is considering all the black paths uh, touching IJ, considering all the black paths touching PQ. And the total is going to be this thing, this quantity. So we have an answer on X, Y. It's this. We can use that answer, we can store it in some matrix F, X, Y. And that's going to give us the solution for number of paths up to X, Y, such that it does not touch any other black cell. From that point, the number of paths to get to this point, let us say A, B, have to be calculated. So this has to be multiplied by number of paths from x, y to a, b. So that will be given by a plus b minus x minus y. And this is a minus x, right? So this is the subtraction you need for the point x, y when getting to a, b. Putting it in a general way, what's going to happen is for each cell, you're going to be looking at those cells which have both an x coordinate smaller than it and a y coordinate smaller than it. Those are the only black cells which will be affecting you. And for each of those black cells which are affecting you, you can use this formula to find the number of paths you have up to yourself. AB is going to be F of AB minus this quantity. All right, and you're doing it for, you're doing a subtraction for XY. You're similarly going to be doing a subtraction for PQ, you're similarly going to be doing a subtraction for IJ with suitable multiplication factors here, here, and so on. Okay, so that is the solution. That's all the solution is. For every point, you need to find out those points which are 
previous to it, which is both x and y coordinates are smaller. So one simple way to do that is to just sort uh, all the black cells according to their row numbers and column numbers. So you will have the row and column numbers sorted. So you'll have a array containing two values each. So an array of tuples. And what could possibly happen is because you're sorting by row number, you can have another black cell here. In which case, this cell should not take these two into consideration. So every time you're running through this matrix and finding out which black cells affect you, you also check if the column number is smaller than you. If it is, then you will be subtracting that quantity using this particular formula. The final thing to take into consideration is we want to find the answer for m minus 1, n minus 1, but this will give you the black cell in the end. So that won't work for us. Instead, what we can do is we can just manually insert a black cell at m minus 1, n minus 1. And so f of m minus 1, comma n minus 1 is going to be given by the same formula that we had earlier. So all black cells previous to this will be taken at this point. Also, of course, this is not a 2D matrix. That's important to note. If we keep it as a 2D matrix, it's it could exceed the space limit or the time limit. So this is going to be an array where each point, this is just a point, a comma b is a point, and they have been sorted according to the row numbers and column numbers. So the overall complexity is going to be if there are k black cells, then k into, for each black cell, you're looking at all of the black cells previous to it. So that will be, for the first black cell, it's one, for the second black cell, it's two, and so on and so forth. So this turns out to be up to k, which is k square by two approximately. So this is order k square. Okay, and of course k is of the order of 10 raised to the power three. So this solution will pass the time limit. So the code for this, along with the detailed problem statement is in the description below. If you want to understand how the implementation worked, you should definitely have a look at the code. We are using dynamic programming in, in some way and we are using combinatorial math and inverse modulo and so on and so forth. But the important bit is that to get to a point, you need to take care of all of the points before it. So the number of ways you can get to a point before it and from that point to this. That's the heart of the algorithm. If you have any further doubts, then you can leave them in the comments below. And if you like the video, press the like button. Uh, if you want to subscribe for further notifications for this, please do so. I'll see you next time.